I'm Dave Brzozowski, the racing manager for Willwood Disc Brakes. Uh, we're going to talk about today the proper bleed procedure for any vehicle that uses two master cylinders and a balance bar assembly. People have in the past have bled one end solely as opposed to doing two, which is incorrect. You may have got away with it, but again, we're going to go through the proper procedure to ensure you have no issues and the balance bar performs to its complete capabilities. Okay, now we're gonna get into the proper bleed procedure um, with a balance bar system. And the first place you're gonna start with is the master cylinder reservoirs. And the, the, the common mistake people make is that they will try to bleed with the caps on. The caps have a bellow system in them. And the purpose of the bellow is, as the fluid displaces the pad wear, this creates a positive pressure into the, into the reservoir to displace the fluid into the master cylinder. If you try to bleed with this cap secured, the bellow comes out and it creates a vacuum in there that will not let you bleed. So the key is to always ensure the cap is relieved. You can set it on there to keep debris from going in there as you're bleeding, but it's a similar process as an OEM car. Again, the, the point of this bellow is not only for uh, helping keep a, a pressure in the reservoir, but it also does a great job in keeping moisture out of the fluid. It helps keep the moisture from getting inside there, but also, as in past with a lot of racing applications, you'll see guys put rags over them. It will not bleed fluid out the top and get brake fluid all over your $1,000 uniform, which will make most people happy. So with that said, we've got that covered. And the next thing is bleed bottles. I mean, that's an imperative thing. Um, you have to have a bleed bottle. And the biggest reason is you want to see the air coming out of the system and also capture the fluid. So we, we have our own bleed bottles. Um, and the key there is there's a hose that goes down in there. You want to have enough fluid in the bottle to have the hose that's internal into there. So when your bleeder's opened, it's not drawing air back into the system. You're going to need two bleed bottles with a system like this because you have to do a front and rear together as we'll get into. Okay, so now we're ready to get into the bleed process uh, with a balance bar system. This is going to be purge bleeding. So you're going to notice I'm going to open the bleeder up. Nobody's going to be pushing the pedal down. Uh, a lot of people I know have pumped the brake pedal, opened the bleeders. You can do that, but the most efficient, effective way is purge bleeding and that's doing the front and rear simultaneously. And with this process, ultimately you'd like to have three people because you have a person in the car that's working the brake pedal, person on the right front, a person on the right rear. Can be done with two, but notoriously you'd like to use three people. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here with our bleed bottle, which you, you should have fluid in there. There's a hose inside. The fluid needs to be to at least the level of the hose inside. So what this does when you open the bleeder, it doesn't draw air back in there as the system's being purged. So we're gonna open the bleeder up, put the hose on, and you'll always, you'll start to see already, it's gonna to start to gravity feed. A lot of this will be dependent on the height of the reservoir, master cylinder position, but it's already starting to, to gravity feed. So we're on the right front. Now we're gonna move. This will simulate the right rear of the car We've opened, got the bleeder on, starting to gravity bleed a bit, as you can see. And what'll happen here is we're gonna do the right front, and then we're gonna go and we're gonna do the left side of the car. So right front, right rear, left front, left rear, but together, front and, and back, always together, not one end alone. It's gotta be simultaneously. The other thing to pick out here is that some calipers, racing calipers only have one bleeder and a lot have two. This particular system has one bleeder. So with that said, when we're gonna bleed the right-hand side of the car, this will end up getting done twice because we have two bleeders on the rear, which we'll go through. We're gonna go to the outside bleeder, the furthest one away from the hose inlet. We're gonna bleed. We're gonna close that one. We're gonna to move to the inside bleeder on the rear, but this one will get bled again because you can't, even though it has one bleeder, you just gotta always make sure it always stays open. If it, it has two like the rear, it's, it just operates the same way. These systems also have an internal crossover tube. People get always asked the question, how does the air get through? 
All of our calipers are designed to have all the fluid uh, pass internally, keep the heat away from uh, the fluid, helps isolate it, it's safer, but also the way they're built is it helps ensure all the air goes to the bleeder. So it should never ever be a concern. So with that said, we've got our bleeders open. Uh, we're on the right side of the simulated vehicle here. Now, if a person was sitting in the seat, which potentially I guess I should do that, as opposed by hand, we're gonna simulate the car. And you're basically gonna be in the race car. The guy's gonna be on the brake pedal and he's gonna be pushing it down all the way to the firewall. He relieves it all the way back. This nice, even strokes all the way down. You're gonna watch the hoses. You're gonna see fluid that comes out of the hoses. Front and rear, you're always gonna do this same way. Now we figure we have a, a good bleed. We see no air in the system. We'll at that time hold the pedal down. Your uh, helper will come in. Again, it can be done with two or three. In this case, my camera is helping me. I'm and gonna pinch the hose and tighten the bleeder. And then I'm gonna go to the front and do the same thing. Meanwhile, Dave's holding the pedal down, not allowing any air to get in the system. And when that's all done, you can relieve yourself off of the pedal there, and you're gonna move on to the next bleeders and repeat this whole process. And when it's all said and done, um, you're gonna pump the brake pedal up and you'll be good to go. The other thing too, as you're doing this, it's imperative to keep an eye on your fluid level. You never want to get that down below. Uh, you start drawing air into your master cylinder, you've created another can of worms. So just keep an eye on that. Um, that's purge bleeding. It's the most efficient way to do it. Um, you'll have no issues.